Spark AR has this really cool thing called the shader code asset. And this uses Spark SL, which is a version of GLSL, uh, which is a programming language for writing uh, shaders or materials. Uh, so that just kind of defines how an object looks when um, Instagram or Facebook or whatever is running the filter is trying to figure out how light should interact with your 3D models. Now, usually you would just use um, like textures to set up your materials inside Spark, uh, but if you need some more fine grained control, you can use shader code. Now, they do have a Spark SL overview on their website that goes over some of the uh, differences, um, but there's not many good examples on their website. Uh, so this tutorial, we're going to take an existing shader from Shader Toy, um, all the code is here, and we're going to go through the process of converting it from uh, Shader Toy to Spark SL. Now, Shader Toy is a website with a bunch of different shaders um, using this um, shading language, GLSL or OpenGL, um, or those derivatives. I'm not sure which exactly. I'm no expert in this stuff. Uh, but we have all this code here, and what this code here does is it creates this cross hatching effect. So we have an input image. Then there are also some other inputs available to the shader. Uh, that will go over as part of the conversion process for Spark SL. Then this code transforms it to this. And we want to add this effect to our Instagram filter. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this code and then head over to Spark AR. Now, I do recommend you save your project. Um, you can do a new project or an existing project, but you want this saved because when we add our shader code asset, it's going to add this to our, our project folder. And if it isn't saved, once you do save your project, you're actually going to have to switch to a different file. Uh, so go ahead and add that shader code asset. And with this selected, we're going to click on edit. And this will open up our default code editor on our computer. Uh, so if you don't have that set up for .sca files, it might open it up in Notepad. Uh, so you might need to go into your system settings and change what opens those files. Now uh, here we have our uh, example shader code. And um, if we go ahead and trust this workspace, I've installed the Visual Studio Code extension. Uh, that's the editor I'm using. Uh, so I get the syntax highlighting. Uh, so I do recommend you do that. Uh, so here's just some example codes. And just to make sure it works, I'm going to click on view to make sure the console is showing. I want to make a change here and save it. And I just want to make sure that uh, Spark is going to compile my code, which is going to convert this from code to something the filter can understand. And it should compile successfully um, if it ever does run. Okay, so that was a little annoying. It took a minute, but we have this compilation or compilation, however you say it, finished successfully. All right, so now we know that um, everything is working fine between the code and Spark. I'm going to select all the example code and paste in that shader toy code. Now, when I save this, um, the compiling process should error out. And that's expected. There are some differences. Uh, so we're just going to go through each error one by one and address them to make sure that our shader can run inside of Spark AR. OK, and we're back. Um, usually, the compiling process is really quick. Um, for whatever reason, with the screen recorder, it's slower. But we just have to deal with that. OK, so anyway, we have our first error. We have this undeclared identifier eye resolution. And right here, it says line 35. So in our code, let's come to line 35. And here we have eye resolution. Uh, so what is eye resolution? We come back to shader toy. That is one of the shader inputs we have here and is the viewport resolution. Now, someone by the name of Adam Ferris has um, put themselves in contention to become a saint because they have here a bunch of Spark SL examples and they have um, explanations of how it's different from, GL, from GLSL. And they also have this converting a shader toy section. So if we come down, we see we have high resolution. You need to get the get render target size function from the standard namespace. So if we come back to our code, now we just make sure that high resolution is defined. So it is a vec2. So I'll do vec2. I resolution gets standard uh, namespace and uh, get render target size is what we want. Now with that 
um, extension I have, um, you will see that there's some auto complete auto complete suggestions coming up. This particular one didn't, um, but we can reference here to see what it should be. All right, so let's save our code, and if we come back, um, we now have a different error: undeclared identifier texture. Uh, so this is on line 37 now. So if you look here, we have texture. So let's come back to our reference, and for the texture, we want to use um, uh, texture dot sample and just pass in the UV. Um, so let's come up to the top and let's find the texture section, sampling textures. And uh, here we can see that we want to um, get the texture and then we just have to do uh, whatever your texture is. So here's named my text, just do my text dot sample, pass in the UV. So I'm going to grab this line here uh, to define our texture. Let's come back to our code. Uh, so since this is a function, I'll go ahead and just pass it in as the first argument. Uh, so we're passing in my text. And instead of doing texture and then passing in the texture here, we're going to delete that, leave the UV, go my text dot sample, and then pass in that UV uh, coordinate. And if we save, we should see that we now have a different error showing up. Uh, so perfect. So this function looks like it's all good. So we're just going to kind of go down the line and fix these errors as we find them. Uh, so the next one is we have undeclared eye resolution. And this time it's in a different function, so it's out of scope. So let's just copy this line and we'll paste it into here. And we'll save it and we get a new error. Look, it's the same texture one. So we want to make sure that we have a texture coming into our main image function. Now, this input texture, we want it to be the um, camera texture. So we actually need to pass it in here. So you see here, uh, we have this out uh, frag color and this in vec2 frag chord. Um, I'm going to delete this frag chord uh, just because I know that we're going to have to make some changes there. And I want to pass in a texture. I'm going to copy this line here. And that is what we want to pass in right here. So we'll pass this in. Now we're going to get this frag chord error. Uh, so let's fix that before we continue with our um, undeclared texture stuff. So we come back to here on this GitHub repo, uh, which, by the way, the link's going to be in the description. So we want to find the frag chords. How this works is um, in a full screen shader, we want to use this line here. So it's going to be a fragment, and we have this git render target size times get vertex text chord. So I'm just going to actually copy this whole line because this is what we want. I will come back into here. We'll save. And now we have fixed our frag chord error and we're back to our texture uh, being undeclared. Uh, so that is line 61. We'll just fix this. So you can see a lot of this is kind of repetitive. Uh, just kind of going through and fixing each error. All right, so we have a lot of things going on here. It uh, looks like too few arguments, expected for, got three. Now, if we remember on our lookup function, we added this texture input as another argument. Uh, so we need to just make sure we pass that to the lookup function. Uh, so here we go, we have lookup. So uh, in Visual Studio Code on Windows, I'm going to hold down Control-Alt and push the down arrow. And now I can just type out... Um, and edit all those lines at once. So I'm going to add my texture as the first argument. And then I'll make sure I get these ones here. And I'll save. And we have some more errors. So let's take a look. Uh, global variable variables must be const declared. Uh, so, the, so this is another difference. So let's come on up to the top. Uh, these are global variables. These exist outside of function. Uh, so what we need to do is just add the word const in front of those, let's add it here, let's add it here, let's add it here, and here, and also here, and there we go. So we have our um, compiling process is now finished successfully. 
let's take a look and see if we can use our uh, shader code as a path. All right, so coming back to Spark, let's go ahead and create this asset patch. And you see here we have um, an input, my text. If we come back to here, um, that is, we've declared this as an in, and the variable name is my text. And coming out, we have a frag color, which here we've declared out frag color. All right, so let's grab our camera texture. So I'll just drag that in here. I'll connect it. And then we need a rectangle to view our uh, shader. Let's add that. We want it full width, full height. Give it a new material. Change that to flat. We'll add the texture patch. Now if we hook this up, um, we can see that we now have an error going on. Uh, so let's take a look at what could be happening. Okay, so coming back to our uh, code here. Um, so we have these outs and ins, and we have the inputs and outputs showing up. Uh, but for fun, I'm going to remove this out. Instead of having that in, I'm just going to leave that as an argument. Now uh, I have some new errors, um, undeclared identifier frag color. So I just want to make sure I put that four in front of that. And I'll return frag color. I save it. Um, oh, I get a new error, type void, but got vec4. So what that means is I'm returning a vec4. So I need to change this function return type to a vec4. And now our compiling process should finish. So if I connect these together, I now get the effect. Now um, with the Let's make this bigger just so we can see our effect really quick. Uh, we have a nice cross hatching effect. So you can play with some of the settings if you want. Now, a few things I didn't cover are these defined color hatches, defined gray hatches. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the C type languages to know how to work with these. Um, so you might need to adjust your code if you want to use these. And then the other thing I want to go over is on our main image, how we had those ins and outs. Um, on our patch, it was working to show us the in and out fields, um, but our code obviously wasn't like working properly. We were getting an error when we tried actually using it. I'm not sure why that's the case. Um, so you can pass in as many inputs as you want, but as far as I know for now, um, at least with my knowledge, you only get this one return. Uh, you can't specify all those different outputs. But with shader codes, you'd probably usually just want the one output. Um, if you know how to use multiple outputs, you probably know how to get that to work. I'm by no means an expert in Spark SL. This is just the process I went through to get a shader working successfully. Uh, so hopefully this serves as a good starting off point and good luck creating.